I grew up here at Hartville. I moved here in third grade and I graduated here. We are kind of your traditional small town. We've got our square with the courthouse on it. We've got old buildings that have been around since Civil War era. When I first came in the classroom, I was one of those traditional teachers. I would stand in front of the class, I would give the notes. Nothing really ever worked great. And then once the EMINS was brought in and I went through that training, um, learning how to help the students work in groups, learning how to guide them. It was amazing to see um, the student who was always resistant to education. Gradually and slowly over the school year, they start getting involved with the group and never been involved before. Uh, start making friends that had never made friends before. You, you can see it in a student's eyes, that big aha moment, when the light bulb goes off and you can tell they finally got it. Well, today we're working with catching up on some websites that you may or may not be familiar with. The biggest thing we do is help teachers learn how to be learners again. Just a second ago, you guys were talking about what your favorite part of working in a technology classroom was. And so now I want you to think again. If you could uh, create a word or a phrase or a picture to describe what you just talked about, what would that be? One of the things I do is I deliver the professional development for the district teachers. I try to make the trainings to be active and meaningful. You know, you've got the live, laugh, learn, and then lifetime, because it's a lifetime skill that we're teaching them. It's not a lot of times teachers don't get that opportunity to just be an instructional designer with other teachers. Enhanced interaction. I like it. In a typical school day, they may work with children all day, and then when the bell rings and the, and the students go on the bus, they may have to work by themselves or they go home. And when you come to an EMINS training, you're working with your peers. They go out and they collect all this data, and they compile, compile all these graphs, and they put it all together in the PowerPoint, and then they have to stand up and teach the rest of the class. They have a better understanding of those concepts of the scientific method, and how important your hypothesis is, and how you have to follow that all the way through. And then Here's what we will do next with that word, phrase, or picture is we have a graffiti wall. And we're going to ask that you come up, select a pen, and either write your word, write your phrase, or draw your picture on the graffiti wall. Doug Caldwell, you know, he stands up there and he models what us as teachers should be doing in the classroom. After the explore time, he brings us all back and had us do a graffiti wall, uh, uh, sharing what we learned and talking about as a group, what, what, here's what I looked at, what am I gonna do with it? So that, that helps me to know that in my classroom, it's important to get them back in that group and say, okay, here's what I've done. So other students can kind of like, oh, I've got an idea now. It's a two-year program. The person who's doing their professional development sessions facilitating those comes into their classroom on at least a monthly basis. So they're very tightly woven with EMINTS, with their facilitator, with the materials, and with their colleagues in this learning community over a period of two years. And that's when the changes begin to take place. Every animal has to have its adaption to it. Environment. Yeah. Why do you think that understanding all that stuff you just mentioned is important? Well, it's important to know if the animal could live there or not. What I want you to do now is I need you to come up with either a picture or a word that represents what you've just talked about. And what has helped me is I choose one thing maybe one lesson I really want to work on and I work on it and I get it done and I use it with the students and then I'll move on to another lesson. 
who are bringing technology to the rural school. Instead of throwing a teacher in that room and saying, hey, enjoy all your new tools, we try to talk about during the trainings, you know, how will we use the tools? How would students use the tools? What is the role of the teacher? What is the role of the technology? I saw your entry point where you used the graffiti wall. Yes, that was a really neat thing last night. I really liked using it, so I really enjoyed it. It helped us um, focus our, our attention on our unit, so I think it's a great, I'm hoping to use it more. I have discovered that if students are digging and finding it for themselves, they will learn it much better. So it has really changed my view of education. A teacher met me in the teacher's lounge and she was crying. She said that was the most powerful thing I've ever done. I really took a chance. I wasn't sure that my students would respond, but I followed through. Then the students generated some terrific questions. And there are things that I wouldn't have thought of as an adult. And it was really meaningful to the students because they were trying to solve problems that meant something to them.